So today we're working on a big Lennox unit. This is a package unit that is cooling the back of a restaurant. Uh, they were complaining that the unit just stopped cooling and uh, that was because we had a high pressure trip and we know that because our board over here was giving us a code 13 on this display right up here. This thing is Lennox. Code 13 right over here corresponds to uh, S4 high pressure open during a demand on heat pump or, or just compressor and uh, that meant that the condensing unit got too hot and I just cleaned this condensing unit like a month ago so I knew that we weren't having any trouble there so we fired the unit up hopped up on top and the condensing fan motor on this side was not running so I actually already took the top off and removed the blade went and got a replacement motor and we're gonna show you how to put that in quick so to remove the fan blade you just have to loosen these two square headed bolts and then pull upward and that thing slides right off the shaft so I already did that and then down here there's just a bolt that clamps this a little bit tight around the motor um, so we got the motor pulled up it's being fed by this black and this purple wire and our new motor is actually the same as this old one that went bad in here uh, so we'll just be wiring that back up the same and also had a 10 microfarad capacitor we did check this this was at 9.55 microfarad so we know it wasn't the capacitor and when I tried to give it a spin it wouldn't wouldn't take off so we know that a bearing in this motor has failed there's our old motor disconnected then we'll just take our new motor and it comes with the wiring diagram. You can see that our brown and our brown striped wires are going to go to our capacitor. And then we can reverse the rotation of the motor by switching the yellow to the orange. Currently, those loops are just yellow to yellow and orange to orange, which that's also how it is on our old motor. So I don't think we're gonna have to change anything there. Um, just a ground to go into the capacitor and our two going each to a leg of uh, 120 volts for our 208, 240 volt range. You wanna get a couple zip ties, please? Okay. Super helpful if you have someone to help you because when you're on top of something like this and your tool bag's way over there, uh, you don't wanna have to be getting up and down 100 times. Into there and pull our wires down so they don't get damaged. So when the motor is clamped into something like this, the ground is a little bit redundant. You can see on the top of the motor we have these two rubber plugs. These rubber plugs you want to have on the motor side that is facing up. So that's how we're going to want them. That'll prevent water from getting in the motor. And then if there's any plugs on the bottom, you need to make sure that you remove them so that the motor can drain properly. So since this end of the motor is going to be facing down, we'll just pull out these wire, uh, rubber plugs. They used to just ship two, and then you would pull out the two on the bottom. Now they ship four, so that each hole is plugged. Don't need those. So we're gonna be using new wire nuts, thank you, for this thing, because these other ones are getting faded and rusted on the inside, and you wanna make sure you have a really good connection to those wires supplying the power. And then we'll just plug up our capacitor Make sure that it's the proper voltage. I checked on the box, it's supposed to be a 10 microfarad, 370 volts, so we're gonna be good to go there with our capacitor. So you just take your capacitor and plug these two wires onto it, like so. We'll get that zip tied up in a minute. And then we will connect our white to our purple, which is just one leg of our power, so you just gotta figure out your legs of power, and our black to our black. Nice fresh wire nut on there, and the other side. Next we're going to tighten up this bolt, and we'll just get our ground wire pinched between the bolt and the frame there, since it uh, isn't long enough to reach any other screws. So we got our wires zip tied down out of the way of the fan blade, and our capacitor zip tied over here. Then we just put our fan blade on, match it to the original height in this shroud. If you put it too low, it'll actually circulate air and it won't really push it out as much like it's supposed to. So that depth is kind of important right there. And then uh, tighten your set screws on the fan blade. I already did the bottom one. Just need to tighten up the top one a little more. 
You wanna go turn it back on, honey? Get your helper to turn the power back on. We'll make sure that we're spinning the right way. Should be going this way. Yep, go ahead. You can also throw this cover back on. Hope that you found this video helpful and good luck fixing your equipment. Talk to you later.